All right, going back to our profile page, uh, we just added a bunch of colors to it in the last demo. Now we're about to blow this up using proper sizing for fonts and the rest of our UI elements. This page is about to get a little nicer. So the first thing I wanna show you guys is absolute sizing, right? So if you look at the HTML file, um, we have a width 300 pixels on the image. You can actually do that with images. You can't do that with, I don't think anything else. So first I'm gonna take this out move it into our um, uh, CSS file, right? So I can say width, let's say 400 pixels. Save that, refresh. So that's an example of a, a very simple absolute um, value. I can also say height 100 pixels. Uh, with images, this isn't a good idea because as you can see, it doesn't respect the aspect ratio of your image. So it starts to look squeezed and, and skewed. And so it, it's just not a good idea. Either um, use width or height. That's a very simple uh, trick. I, uh, the easiest uh, trick I have for images. Images are much, much more complicated to handle uh, if you wanna cover you know, all cases. But in this case, I just wanna show you a uh, absolute value. And so you can just put a PX here. Next, what I wanna show you is uh, browser default sizing for fonts, right? So we talked about EMs and REMs. So if I go to my Chrome setting and look for fonts, you can see there's a font size, custom font size. There's 16, that's, that's what I have as my default in Chrome. That may or may not be what your users have, but you can't really count on that, right? So if you want to, uh, uh, actually, let me show you something cool. So assuming this is the default value of my uh, browser font uh, size, if I go back here, if I click on HTML, there's actually no font size here, but the browser will actually act as if uh, the HTML element has a font size 16 pixels on it. And here's how I can prove it. If I look at my H1s, and again, default browser styles, 2EM. If you look at the computed tab, this is actually what ends up being rendered. Uh, font size, 32. So it's 16 times 2, 32. So if I wanted to change that, that will actually affect all of the children that have EM and REM on it, um, on them. And as you can see, a bunch of default uh, styles uh, include EMs. So let's go back to our page and I'm actually going to put a HTML font size 16 pixels myself on this page. If I save, refresh, Nothing actually changes in terms of the font size because again, my, my default uh, browser setting already has 16 on it. But if I go here and change this guy, 17, 18, 19, you see everybody's getting affected because everybody without me writing any CSS is looking at the HTML tag for, um, to get a hint as to how, how big they should be. So I'm gonna leave this as, at 16, but what I'm gonna do is, let's say I want my uh, paragraphs to be a little bit bigger. Uh, P tags have, I think one, where are we, EM? No, I want a P tag. P tags have one EM on them. So what if I said P font size 1.2 REM. Now they're going to become a little bit bigger. And if we look at the computer, uh, that's 16 times 1.2, uh, 19.2. So you can see things uh, can start uh, affecting each other if you use relative values. Another thing I wanna do is show you an example of EM, not REM. So uh, in our P tag, I think we have uh, an anchor tag. There we go. We have a link that's inside our P tag. So if our P tag is actually just one REM, meaning 16 pixels, what's gonna happen if I say A 1.2 EM font size, whoop, 
size 1.2 em what's going to happen is that my a tag is going to take its size from its parent so since its parent is 16 pixels 1.2 is going to make it 19.2 also so in this case it it's actually taking it from its uh, parent but not the root element not the html tag um, if i change this to rem it actually won't make a difference because our p tag is still 16 but what if our p tag was a little bit uh, different what if it was 2 rem and we'll come back to our a tag and we we'll change that to also 1.2 em so now it's taking its value uh, again from its uh, from its parent but notice what's so difficult about working with this kind of coding is that in order for me to know how big this anchor tag is I have to know who its parent is and I have to look at its parent's size first so I'm gonna have to go back up and I'm gonna have to look at the p tag oh it's 2 rem well what is 2 rem well I'm gonna have to go back to the HTML tag and Oh, wait a minute, font size is 16. Um, so it becomes very difficult, uh, even with two elements here, very difficult to find out, you know, how big an element is. And a lot of times you do need to know because designers are coming to you and they're asking you to fix things and you get you get bugs reported and you need to, you need to fix some UI element. You need to be able to find out uh, where sizing is coming from as quickly as possible so you can go in and fix it so that's one of the reasons I don't like EM and but if we uh, uh, if we switch things to REM then at least you have one reference point which is just your HTML tag and then you're just looking at that guy for um, for your guidance um, I'm gonna switch these guys back uh, let me go back to my P tag I don't want this uh, I want them to be the same but let's say I wanted my header and footer. Uh, right now they're uh, they're a little bit uh, small. What if I want to make both of them bigger? Uh, I can just come here, header, footer. I can say font size two rem. So they're both going to become 32. There we go. Let's uh, let's change our h1 also. Is that an h1 we have up here? Yeah, we have an h1. This guy. We're going to make him bigger. So it's five RM. It's gonna be huge. Boom. All right. So you can see an example of an absolute value. You can also see examples of relative values. So um, yeah. So hopefully with these three last three videos gave you an idea on how to start sizing things. I want you to try them out use pixels, use REM, or even use EM just to understand really the differences between all of them. Um, so if, if you look at your page right now, there's still some annoying little problems. Can you tell? What's bothering you the most about this page? I mean, even though we took care of some of the sizing and the header is now bigger and the uh, H1 is bigger and header and footer are now more pronounced, um, we still have what I call spacing issues. I mean, uh, look at the text touching the edges of its containers and it's just not looking very good, right? That's where spacing comes into play. So let's move on to the next topic, the box model, all hail box model. Uh, it's a very important thing to, uh, to understand well if you want to fix problems like this, if you want to take your page to the next level so it actually looks like a you know, professional page. The box model explains how using padding and margin can create a much nicer layout. Okay, I will see you then.